What's up, guys? It's Rob here, and today we've got to talk about Rumble and CFVI because the merger is happening soon, and we actually have to address something that I said in the last video, something that was uh, incorrect. There was an incorrect detail. It was just one detail, but it was a somewhat major detail uh, that's pretty important for the future of the company. So I'm going to address what was incorrect in last video and give you guys some new information about these stocks. Now, first off, I'll address what was incorrect. So you can see there was a big drop in CFEI stock yesterday. And I explained that there was some fear around potential dilution. Now, the article that I was pulling from was a bit misleading, probably not purposely misleading, but I ended up going to the SEC report, the official report that Rumble put out, and it was a lot more clear about this issue. So most of what I said in the last video is correct, but there's one key thing that's not, and it's actually somewhat bearish, right, versus what was uh, what, what I thought was the case when I made the last video from that article. So uh, I'll break down what's going on with the dilution for Rumble stockholders, and I'll explain the detail in its entirety and how it actually is going to play out. So basically, people are a little bit worried because there's the potential for big dilution in Rumble stock, all right? Rumble shareholders and option holders have the potential to receive 105 million additional shares if Rumble meets some specific criteria while it's trading as as Rumble, right? Not as CFEI. And those criteria are 50% of those shares, 50% of those 100 million shares get handed out if Rumble maintains a price of $15 for 20 out of 30 trading days. And the other 50% get handed out if Rumble maintains a price of $17.50 for 20 out of 30 trading days. Now, the detail that I was missing was that this doesn't end for five years of when Rumble actually goes public. So it's not just the first 30 days that Rumble is public, it's for any 30 day period within five years of Rumble becoming public that these shares can be handed out. And so that's actually a pretty major detail, right? That actually makes it much, much more likely that these shares will be dispersed and that Rumble will end up getting diluted a bit. And so it's understandable that there was uh, you know, move down because the market cap of the stock would be pretty dramatically affected. And we're going to break down exactly how now. I'll point out that I'm still a bull on Rumble, right? I still think that regardless of the dilution, I think Rumble's going to do well. I think that we need a free speech platform like Rumble and that people will probably be flocking to it for years to come, that they'll continue growing massively. And I expect their price to increase whether or not this dilution happens. That's just my expectation of financial advice. But I'll break down how this dilution is going to affect the share price and the market cap right here. So the total supply of Rumble shares, uh, if the dilution happens, is 377 million. Now, the 105 million shares may not end up getting dispersed. I think they likely will. But if they don't, then the share count would be 272 million shares. Now, how would that actually affect Rumble's price at or Rumble's uh, market cap at different prices or potentially their price at you know the same market cap? So if Rumble were to be at $10, and that's actually a pretty bearish scenario, considering the fact that there are 12 right now before the merger's even gone through. Uh, that's a pretty bearish scenario, right? If the dilution were to happen, say, you know, at some point after the merger goes through, and then they return to a price of $10, they would have a $3.77 billion market cap. If the dilution didn't go through, which if they're trading at $10, I'm guessing the dilution never happened, they've, they'd have a market cap of $2.72 billion. So very small market caps, actually. For how many monthly active users they've got 78 million monthly active users and 77 percent year over year growth on that number so they're performing very well i would expect them to have larger market caps than this especially over the course of five years if they continue to grow on the trajectory that they have so a more realistic scenario would actually be uh to look at would be rumble at 20 dollars per share now if the dilution goes through and it would if rumble was sustaining itself at 20 dollars per share would be a market cap of $7.54 billion. So we're starting to get pretty large. And that's probably the number that we'd be going with. There's a very low chance that Rumble would be at $20 just very temporarily and uh, you know not be holding there for 20 out of 30 days and uh, would then have you know non-dilution and would have a market cap of $5.44 billion. But I just put that here to show you guys the difference in the market caps with the dilution right? 7.54 billion and without 5.44 billion. It's a somewhat significant number. You know, we're getting into the multiple billions of dollars worth of market cap change right there. 
Now, a more bullish scenario, right? Rumble at $40. What would the market caps look like there? Well, if the dilution weren't to take place, we'd see a $10.88 billion market cap. Pretty significant, right? Getting into the double digits of billions, very significant, actually. Now, I think Rumble could you know, pretty easily do this over the course of five years if they continue with this massive growth and if they find a good way to monetize the monthly active users that they've got. I think they could do this pretty easily. And I think that there's a lot of people who will want to use Rumble, even if it's a little bit more wonky than some of the other video streaming platforms, even if it maybe costs them something more or just isn't quite as easy to use. I think there's a lot of people who will be willing to do it because of the free speech aspect and because there's not as much danger of getting canceled if you're posting on there. I think there's a lot of people who will do it. So these market caps don't seem too out of reach for me. Now, uh, with the dilution, though, we would be looking at a much larger market cap, almost a 50% increase to $15 billion worth of market cap. So you can see at these higher prices, the dilution really starts to affect the market cap on a pretty big level. That's an extra $5 billion worth of market cap that we would need. That's larger than what Rumble will be IPOing at, right? Uh, without the dilution. So it's it's a pretty significant boost that they're going to need to get to $40. Now we'll look at a very, very bullish scenario for Rumble, okay? This is where you really start to see a massive difference and where they start to kind of become uh, huge differences in market cap with the dilution versus without. Rumble at $100 per share with the dilution. Well, let's go without the dilution first. $27.2 billion versus $37.7 billion. That's pretty massive. In fact, if you look at a stock uh, like Twitter, has a $31 billion market cap, the dilution is determining which side of that market cap you're on. Without the dilution, it's $27 billion. So it's a smaller market cap than Twitter. With the dilution, it's $37 billion, much larger than Twitter. So it becomes pretty important, this dilution. And obviously, we want the Rumble shareholders who are currently there to be incentivized to get Rumble's share price up. And that's part of the reason why that dilution is put in there, right? It's a reward for the Rumble shareholders and, the, and you know the owners to actually really push Rumble and get its price up there to the next level because they, they want that extra share count. They want those shares put in their accounts, right? So it makes a lot of sense. Um, but it does get kind of tough uh, at these higher market caps to really go from 27 billion, you know, to 37 billion. That's an extra $10 billion worth of market cap. So it gets difficult at these higher prices. Uh, but overall, I think that, you know, over the course of 5, 10, 20 years, Rumble's going to do very well. Uh, it's a great video streaming platform, a lot of free speech aspects and advocates. People are moving over there. I've got a channel on Rumble for anyone who's interested. I post there pretty much all the videos that I post. Maybe I'll start making some exclusive content for Rumble. We'll see. Uh, if anyone's watching on Rumble, feel free to subscribe, right? We're trying to grow the channel there. I would much rather you guys subscribe on Rumble than on YouTube, though you can subscribe on YouTube if you want, where we've got about 12,800 subs. Maybe we can get this up to 13,000. We'll see. Uh, but overall, guys, that's the news that I had to cover with Rumble stock. I think that they're going to do really great things in the future. That's just my opinion, not financial advice. I wanted to break down some of the market caps and correct the error that I made in the last video. And hopefully you guys are understanding the situation a lot better now. So if you are, feel free to drop a like on the video or a Rumble. And other than that, guys, have a great rest of your day. Not financial advice. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.